So guys, is this a project box or what? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Yes, after 500 million thousand years, I finally decided to get back to the electronics. It's just with all my chronic depression and lack of energy on account of not being able to sleep at night, I just haven't had the motivation to do anything. Not today though, because today, I'm not feeling as depressed as I normally do, and I actually have some energy. So I spent all day working on this, making a project box for the Tesla coil driver. So, this is where our power's gonna go in. I mean, where the power's gonna go in. And this is what's gonna come out to the MOSFET gates. And yes, I know it's got cats on it, but this is the only box I could find that was metal and is the right kind of size. Well, it is done. So this is where the transformer for the power is going to be connected. Center tapped, of course. These are the controls. So these two controls here are for the frequency. I forget which is coarse and which is fine, but we'll find out in just a little bit. This is to turn the interrupter on and off. And this is the one to adjust the interrupter speed. And this is where the gate and the source of each MOSFET is going to be connected. And inside, although it's rather a rat's nest of wiring, there is everything. With a ground connection to the case, so everything in there is nice and shielded. And Tails approves of this design. Right, so before I plug this into any Tesla coil circuits, just want to give it a little test to make sure it's working. So, I've got my test transformer hooked up, providing the power. And I've got this connected to my oscilloscope, which isn't on right now. A rather haphazard way of connecting it to the output terminals, but, um... Let's turn it on and see if it works! And yeah, that seems to be working. This is what's coming out of our gate drive transformer. Now I'm going to adjust a few things, so this should be either the coarse or fine frequency adjustment. Well, I've got it in the camera, and that seems to be working. The coarse frequency adjustment. Good. Now let's turn the interrupter on. I don't think the scope's picking that up. And there we are. Little blips. I had to put something over that LED because it's just so bright. And let's see if we can adjust that. And indeed we can. So, everything's working. Brilliant. Now, before we go on, I just want to do a little PSA, or rather, um, answer someone's question, because, although you posted a question to me, it doesn't appear in the comments section, so I cannot reply to it, so I'm gonna reply to it here. Now, you can see here, we've got a nice clean square wave coming out, and you said that your waveform is rather spiky. Well, it could be the gate drive transformer. I mean, this was one that I sourced out of Goodness only knows what and it works, but it's kind of a mixed bag if you do that. It might work, it might not, you just never really know what you're getting. For me this one did work, but your results might vary. But also, your scope probes might be lying. Now, at the moment I've got an ordinary scope probe connected to the output of this, going into the scope. As you can see, it's nice and clean, but I'm going to change to a much lower grade version, much cheaper one, and let's see what we get then. Right, so now I've got this much cheaper lead on. Now, I haven't adjusted anything, everything in here is got Everything in here is exactly the same, same frequency, same everything. But look at the waveform now. And that's simply because I'm using this very bad oscilloscope lead. Let's go back to the other one. Now I've got the good lead connected again, and you can see it's back to how it should be. So this is what I'm going to go with first. Now, bear in mind, this is just an experimental circuit. I don't even know if it's going to work. It would also help if I was pointing the camera at it. Instead of looking past the camera, I should look through the viewfinder so I can see what the camera's actually pointed at. 
what I'm going to do first is try to make a base vent coil. So, we've got our box of tricks here, which is the, well, this, and there's a MOSFET, an inductor, and our output coil. Now, these are two separate coils, they're not wound around each other like you would find in a, a typical Tesla coil. And how the circuit should work is, when the MOSFET is closed, this inductor should store energy in the form of a magnetic field. And when the inductor, um, when the MOSFET opens again, it should dump all of that energy, or at least most of it, into the bottom of our base fed coil, and we should get output, as long as we do this at the right frequency. Now I am aware that we will get a high voltage here when the MOSFET opens, but uh, you know, that's just due to the nature of inductors. But like I say, I don't know how well this is going to work, so uh, that's what we're going to do now. My worst fears are confirmed. Without any load, everything's fine. I put this MOSFET on as a dummy load just to check everything works. And the resistor burns, it just cannot handle the current. So, I'm going to have to come up with something else. Okay, so I'm just trying a few different things here. Trying to find the ideal resistance. At the moment, we've got 5 ohms between the gate drive chips and the gate drive transformer with a MOSFET connected as a load. Getting a nice square waveform. So I'm just going to play around with this until we find the ideal resistance. And I'm focus on the resistors, stupid camera. Well, that's about 3.3 ohms and the waveform's getting a little bit ugh now, but um... So this is what I've come up with. A few 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, I mean 4.7 ohm resistors. Got two here in parallel, another two in parallel, and connected in series, so it's still 4.7 ohms, and a nice square wave output. So let's put the tape over that so it doesn't short out. We'll close this up, and we'll connect this to a coil. Okay then, we're all set up and ready to test. So, over here we've got the inductor and the MOSFET and the coil. I've also put a light bulb in series with the power supply for the, um, power, you know, this part of the circuit. Just in case anything goes wrong, just in case my MOSFET shorts out and, uh, well, I don't want my power supply shorting out, so that's what that bulb's doing. I've got the scope hooked up to the source and drain of the MOSFET so we can see the waveform across the MOSFET. Alright then, so, I'm going to start with about 3 volts going into this part of the circuit. So if there's any high voltage spikes from the inductor, which I'm pretty sure there will be, it shouldn't be too much to blow the MOSFETs. So first, I'm going to turn this on, and then see what we get across the MOSFET. Ah yeah, the inductor definitely seems to be doing its thing. Again, some spikes there of about, let's see, that's about 10 volts per division. Let's just center that a little better so we can see, see what's going on here. Well, that's maybe like 25 volt peaks there from a 3 volt input. So, I'm now going to start adjusting the frequency and see what that does. I've got a big peak there. really seeing much of anything. I don't know what the resonant frequency of this is, actually. Haven't tested that, although we don't seem to be getting any kind of action. Alright, so, I've added a crude antenna onto the oscilloscope. So that's going to pick up any RF coming off this coil. Now I'm going to tune the output, and let's see where we get most output from. Okay. Seems that this thing has a very high frequency. Oh, there we go. There's something. If I can just get that. I don't know why it's jumping about like that, but this appears to be the resonant frequency of this coil, which is about 355 kilohertz. So, yeah, I think before we go any further, I'm going to put a snubber on this inductor. Suppose to be storms right now, according to the weather forecast. So what do we get? 
So, well, good news. Mum's gone downstairs. It's clouded up. It started raining, so I can get on with it. So I can get back to the experiments. Now, isn't this cozy? Being indoors while it rains outside? Isn't this so much more cozy than boring old sun? So this is my snubber net. This is my snubber network. Got a Schottky diode, or at least I believe that's a Schottky diode. And connected to that diode, a 47 ohm resistor. And a 1 ohm, I mean, 1 microfarad non electrolytic capacitor in parallel with it. I just took the first things I found and put them together. The capacitor should take care of the initial spike from the inductor's kickback. And then the resistor should take care of the rest of it. Okay, I think I've tracked down the reason for the unstable output frequency. There's this transformer here. Just don't got the grunt. So, when I have a MOSFET connected, there's the load. It's pulling the output of this transformer down so much that the regulators cannot do their job. And I'm only getting about 9 volts going into the circuit. So I think it's time we beefed up the transformer. I'm going to use this one here, this ancient relic from the 1960s. I've measured the output voltages. It's about 13.7 volts. She might be cutting it close, but when that's rectified, take into account the 0.6 volt drop across the rectifiers. We're going to have about 17 volts going in there, so I think this is the transformer to use. So as Mythbusters would say, well there's your problem. Well, the new transformer is working good. Look at the readout on the scope. Steady as a rock. Well, frequency-wise anyway. So. This is with the snubber connected, and this is what we're getting across the MOSFETs drain and source. So we're still getting spikes of about, yeah, I don't know what's going up and down like that, but still getting spikes of around maybe 20 volts or so. So I'm going to add another resistor to that and we'll see what that gets us. Would help if I actually started the camera recording. I'm going to take this 47 ohm resistor. And I'm going to put it across this 47 ohm resistor on the snubber and see what we get on the scope. There we go. Okay, that has taken that down quite considerably. If I could just get that to stay on there, of course. That's taken that down from about 20 volts to maybe under 10 volts. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've removed the capacitor so we now have just the diode and the resistor across the inductor. We'll see what that will do to our waveform. Well, that's definitely increased the voltage across the MOSFETs. So now, I'm going to take this resistor again, put it across this resistor, and we'll see what that does. If I can get it on there, of course. Well, if I can get it on, I'm sure by this, there we go, yeah, that's quite, a, that's actually working quite well. It reduces it from about 25 volts to about, uh, maybe 8 volts or so. I'm seeing spikes there of about 30 volts. I'm not sure why that's going up and down like that. I mean, the frequency's rock solid now, but, I'm um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to investigate this a little bit further and when I find a very good snubber to use I can then ramp the voltage up and we'll see if we can get anything out of this. Now what I think is interesting here just how much this transformer can reflect how much power this thing is pulling. For instance, I've got this set to whatever I'm not actually measuring the frequency I don't even know why my scope's on you can see the bulb in series with the transformer it's glowing just a bit. Now I'm going to turn the frequency up. Hopefully get this all in the shot. And the bulb comes on brighter. Yeah, of course you would be able to see if it's a stupid wire wasn't in the way. Low frequency. High frequency. Low frequency. High frequency. 
And that's all because of how much oomph it takes to switch the MOSFET gate on and off at high frequencies. Okay, I've got about 5 volts going into the MOSFET. I was snubber with a diode and a 10 ohm resistor. We're getting about 10 volts across the MOSFET. That is really cutting it down. Still, must experiment. Must experiment! Hopefully this is going to keep the room cool. Got one fan bringing in cool air. And one fan blowing out hot air. If this doesn't work, I'm going to have to resort to air conditioning. Which I have. Had the temperature gets down enough. At least down to 23. Come on, 23! You can do it! Come on! It seems that this is the ideal configuration. So we have a diode, a resistor which is 10 ohms, and a capacitor which is 103, which is 10 nano farads. This is the before waveform, and this is the after waveform, or in other words, with the capacitor. So, yep, this is what I'm going with. I mean, yeah, we're never going to completely get rid of it. But we can get rid of most of it. I don't know why I just said that, but this is what I've come up with. So we have our box of tricks here, and a MOSFET. I haven't marked out what MOSFET that is because, well, I'm likely to change that, so... This is our output coil, which is a thousand turns of very fine wire. This is the inductor, which I measured as 820 microhenry. And of course, the snubber that I came up with. So, these are the designs, and um, 10, 10 ohms and 10 nanofarads seems to work pretty well for this uh, for the snubber. Of course, you're never going to get rid of all of the inductive kickback, but, you know, we can get rid of most of it. With this, I can get, like, maybe twice the supply voltage across the MOSFET, whereas without the snubber, I was getting maybe 10 times that easily. So that shows it does work. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Why am I using the resistor and capacitor? Why not I just put the diode across the inductor and have done with it? Well, if I did that, I'd break the diode. Because even though you see like that in things like motors and relays, that's only a once in a while pulse. The diode's going to be absolutely fine with that. But with this, we've got thousands of pulses each second. So, that diode's going to heat up pretty quickly. There's going to be, like, thousands of pulses of high current going through that diode every second. It's, you know, it's not going to last long. Hence the resistors and capacitors. Hence the resistor and capacitor. Now, the very next thing is... And before anybody asks, no. Changing the frequency does not change the voltage across the inductor. See? Steady as a rock. And about only twice the voltage we're putting in. No stupid stuff going on here. This is science! Science! Okay, well, unfortunately, I think we've just run out of time. And I did try a few things with this, but I haven't had any luck so far. I didn't think this was going to work, but it was worth a try. So, this isn't where I'm ending though. Because this box here, this thing I've made, this is going to be the heart of many tester coil experiments. This is just one of them. Anyway, yeah. We know this works, and it survived, and I can adjust my frequencies. If you're wondering what we're seeing right now, well, um. This is the waveform across our MOSFET, gate to source. And this is what's being picked up by this wire here. Being picked up, the RF coming off this coil. So, it is actually working. It's just not producing any output. Anyway, this video is probably 10,000 million hours long already, so... I've got to go and edit this. And anyway, the next video might not be for a while because, well... It's absolutely baking hot in this room. 
according to the weather, it's only 26 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. But yeah. It's just too hot in this room to work on anything. So yeah. Most of the desk space is going to be taken up by this extra fan. Just trying to keep me cool. So that's why I'm not going to be able to do an ex um, um, yeah. So that's what's going to be on the desk for a while. So that's going to make it so I cannot do my experiments for a while. Anyway, with all that said, until next time, goodbye. Damn son, I want more clouds. This is where the transformer for the power is going to be connected. Wow.